it wasn't something I could accept at first. Well, the whole idea of additional scripture seemed, well, blasphemous. I never thought, like some people said, that God was dead or anything like that. I guess I just thought he'd said all he had to say in the Bible. I'd look through it from time to time, but I'd never really sat down and uh, read through the Book of Mormon. It uh, clearly either had to be a book that was written by a, a man or a, a book that was translated by through the gift of God. The claims of the church were so outlandish, I guess I did have in mind that it might be fairly easy to disprove. Since 1830, when the first edition of the Book of Mormon came off the printing press, it has been the object of scorn and ridicule among those who dispute its claim of divine origin. In that same period of time, the book has come to be a source of great joy and assurance to several million people worldwide who believe it is the word of God. Why should a 522-page book published in the small town of Palmyra, New York, cause such an uproar? Clergymen of the era lambasted it from the pulpit, and others took the cry. expect us to believe that God appeared to them in some of New York state to save the world? They want to save our money. Others claimed the Book of Mormon was a plagiarism from a 19th century novel by Solomon Spaulding. Today, there are hundreds of pamphlets and books on the market that proclaim the Book of Mormon is a fraud and caution would-be readers not to get involved. Despite the accusations, or perhaps because of them, many people have sought to learn the truth for themselves. What is the Book of Mormon? Of what value is its contents? Some who read it say it teaches them how to cope with daily problems. Others feel it gives them a new sense of their own worth, a new purpose in living. Many say, through the Book of Mormon, they've found the means to draw their families closer to them. They've discovered how to be prosperous and successful, how to increase their faith in God. Why? How? Where did the Book of Mormon come from? Six hundred years before the birth of Jesus Christ, there lived in Jerusalem a prophet named Lehi. He was warned by the Lord in a dream that Jerusalem would soon be destroyed and was commanded to leave the city with his family. The Lord led the people across the ocean to the new world. Shortly after they landed, the Lord commanded Nephi, Lehi's son, to keep an accurate record on gold plates of all the important events which happened among his people in their new home. This Nephi did faithfully all his life. The record inscribed on their gold plates was passed from generation to generation for nearly a thousand years. As they were handed down, numerous prophets continued to add writings of their own. Finally, in A.D. 400, a descendant of Nephi, the prophet Mormon, was commanded by the Lord to make an abridgment from the many records to one volume. Mormon lived in a time when there were great wars in the land. Over a thousand-year period, the family of Lehi had grown and multiplied into vast cities and nations. The people had split into two major factions, and Mormon's people were about to be totally destroyed by their enemies. Before Mormon himself was killed, he gave an abridged account of the gold plates to his son Moroni, who wandered in fear of anti-Christian enemies 20 years. And finally, after adding writings of his own, buried the sacred record in the earth for safekeeping. Centuries passed. The world had no knowledge of this ancient Western Hemisphere people who lived long before the Aztecs and the Mayans. Then in 1823, the resurrected Moroni appeared to a young man named Joseph Smith in New York State. Moroni explained that he had been sent by the Lord and described the location of the sacred records he had hidden many hundreds of years earlier. The time had come for God to bring forth the writings of ancient New World prophets as a companion volume 
to the revealed word of God contained in the Bible. Joseph Smith found the plates buried in a hill, as Moroni had described. By the gift of God, Joseph translated the plates. The translation was then published and called the Book of Mormon. The missionaries made an appointment, and then they came over to the house one night and asked us if we would read the Book of Mormon. And the, and the missionary said there was a scripture in there that really pertained to the problems of our day, and would we read it. So since they were so young and sincere, we decided that we'd go ahead and read a few chapters. One day, I decided to sit down and read the book, so I opened it up all about in the middle and started reading, and it was right where it talks about faith and how it's like a little seed and how it can grow into knowledge. I just really felt a warm, warm feeling all through my body that I knew that what I was reading was true and right. Well, I'm a professional bus operator. Several times during the day, I have a few minutes. And so I used to do quite a bit of reading of various books and magazines. Then one day, uh, somebody, a friend of mine, came along and says, here, uh, why don't you read this book? But that is the Book of Mormon. And any time now, when I have a few spare minutes, I just read it. My wife, she said that she even noticed a great difference in me lately. But I could actually feel a difference inside of myself. It's just a feeling of warmth and of comfort. And it seemed like I had a better uh, knowledge of everyday life. That's about the most important part of the whole Book of Mormon, that Christ came to America. His people weren't just in Jerusalem. People are everywhere, and he was telling the people in America that God is real, that he loves us, and this life is just a testing period to see if the people choose to love God or not. In reading the Book of Mormons, we found that there's so much information, particularly in 3rd Nephi, which is my favorite part of the Book of Mormon, and it teaches us so much. I find that there is more peace more happiness in my home than there used to be because we couldn't agree on agree with different things and we have become closer together as a family we love one another more and i don't know my whole life has changed completely and i think this was the greatest thing that ever happened to us was when a missionary knocked on our door i'm not afraid of things if I go in 10 years or tomorrow, that's all right. The Book of Mormon has helped me to have that peace inside. Well, since I came to a, a knowledge of the Book of Mormon, my whole perspective of life has changed in very many ways. And the relationship that I have with my father has become much more special to me. You know, we used to pull against each other. We, we used to have problems and arguments now and then, a kind of typical father and son relationship. And that as we go out to work together now, we have a spirit of, of I guess, love and unity or, or whatever you want to call it, something like that. I received a copy of this book about six years ago. That time, I had a lot of Mormon friends, they're very happy. The reason why they're happy because they live by the teaching of the Book of Mormon. In order for me to know that Book of Mormon is true, I had to read and pray about it. One day, I was able to receive an answer that the teachings are true. I felt very happy inside. And I also felt I took my first step to becoming a new person. The Book of Mormon has been published in over 20 different languages and distributed to nearly every country in the world. There are millions worldwide who consider the Book of Mormon to be the Word of God, a second witness along with the Bible that Jesus is the Christ. Each person must decide for himself if it is true. Is the Book of Mormon the Word of God? There's only one way to find out.
And when ye shall receive these things, I would exhort you that ye would ask God, the Eternal Father, in the name of Christ, if these things are not true. And if ye shall ask with a sincere heart, with real intent, having faith in Christ, he will manifest the truth of it unto you by the power of the Holy Ghost.